Hi everyone, so today we're going to be taking a look at the text to speech model and this model also does voice cloning and it's currently at version 0.2 and it's also a 500 million parameter model and we're going to be taking a look at this regular model today and we'll also be taking a look at the GGF quantized version. Now, we'll be setting this up locally like we always do and let's go over to their web page. Now, their web page is artai.com. I think their official name is Art AI. And if we go over here, now this is their blog post they actually wrote for this new release. As you can see, advanced text to speech model with multilingual support. Now, as you can see over here in the model description, it says Art CTS 0.2 500 million parameter model is our improved successor to the version 0.1 release. The model maintains the same approach of using audio prompts without architectural changes to the foundation model itself. Built upon the Quen 2.50.5 billion parameter model, this version was trained on larger and more diverse datasets, resulting in significant improvements across all aspects of performance. Now, the key improvement, it actually has multilingual support. As you can see over here, it says new experimental support for Chinese, Japanese, and Korean languages. So it actually supports four languages currently, um, English, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean languages. So by default, it supports English. And for this video, we're going to only be checking out English since that's all I speak, basically. <laughs> and as you can see over here in the voice cloning, it says improve voice cloning capabilities with greater diversity and accuracy. So we are going to definitely put it to the test and see how it actually performs and how close it is to the speaker who would actually be cloning. Now, um, it actually improved natural speech and all that and enhanced accuracy and expanded vocabulary. But we'll see all that when we generate the speech and when we we'll also do the voice cloning. So now let's go back to Jogging Face page. So we're going to go to files and versions. So the files we actually need are from here to here. So you download all the .json files and also the .safe tensors. And one final thing is magis.txt. So you can just download everything I highlighted. Those are the files you would actually need. And to download them, you just click on this button here. So let's download them. And I'm going to put them in a different directory. And since I actually said earlier in this video, we're going to also be checking out the GGUF quantized version. So let's go back to the hugging face default page so we can actually access the GGUF quantized version over here. Now we'll go over to files and version again. And this time we're going to be going for the Q4KM and we'll also be going for Q8 underscore zero. So we are going to be comparing the both of them. The file size difference is not much. This one is 403 megabytes, while this is 537 megabytes. But we'll see which of them actually performs better. Um, since the higher the quantization number, the better it actually performs. Um, even though it might actually take up more resources to actually perform inference, but we'll see. Now let's go over to our IDE and check out our folder structure. So make sure your virtual environment is already set up. We won't be going over that in this video, but just a quick note, um, I used virtual env to set up my virtual environments and the Python version I'm actually using is Python version 2.12, just so you know. And also the PC I'm actually going to be running inference on is my MacBook M1 Pro with 16 gigs of unified memory. That's for those of you that have been wondering what PC I'm actually using. And once we actually perform inference, you're going to see how long it actually takes to generate speech and we'll also see how long it actually takes to clone a voice. So a package we're going to be installing right now is the Python Lama CPP package since we'll be performing inference on the GGUF quantized version. So let's go to the page and so let's copy this. So make sure your virtual environment is already set up and active. So if we go over to our terminal, as you can see mine is active. Now I can just run this. Now let's go back to the Jogging Face page and I'm going to copy the code example they actually give us. This one I'm going to copy and I'm also going to make some changes to it. Now, if you look at our project folder structure, as you can see, I have this here and I also have the GGUF quantized versions here. So I have the Q8 underscore zero and the Q4 underscore M. So that's how I actually structured mine. And these are the way files of the speaker we're going to be cloning. One is Cogman from, um, I think it's from the Transformer movie, last The Last Night. And I also have Jarvis here. That's what I'm going to be cloning. And I think they are recommended 
audio duration for voice cloning is actually 10 to 15 seconds so you can actually check that out now if we go over to main.py that's where we're going to be pasting our code now as you can see over here i'm pointing this model path to this direct three and we're going to be using the hugging face model config and let's install this package and if you're not using pycharm where this option is visible for you you can just copy this and run pip install and you will just install the package but since i have that visible i'm actually installing the package currently and it's running in the background so the moment is actually done you're going to generate the speech from text and as you can see package is installed successfully now um, we can actually run this code and before we actually do that we are going to uncomment the play the output.play so it will automatically play whatever audio it generates and this is a file it will be generating output.wave another thing to actually take note of is this it will print the default speakers i think there are about six or seven um, default speakers and we're going to check out about two or three of them and then we'll move over to the voice cloning now let's run the code Now, um, as you can see, it printed all the default speakers. We have male 1, male 2, male 3, male 4, female 1, and female 2. And the speaker we actually did load is male 1, and you're going to hear it speak now. And this is the text we actually passed in. Make sure you do that before you actually run the code. And as you can see, hello world, my name is Jarvis. I am a creation of Tony Stark. Could you please tell me? We are we are to find them at so that's what it's going to see so let's wait for you to be done running hello world my name is jarvis i am a creation of tony stark could you please tell me where to find him at as you can see that's what it actually sounds like that's the mail one speaker now let's try uh mail two and let's run this code again Hello world, my name is Jarvis, I am a creation of Tony Stark. Could you please tell me where to find him at? And that's what male 2 speaker actually sounds like. Now we're going to change this to female. And we'll be going for female 1. So you can actually check out um, the different speakers here for yourself. But after female 1, we are going to go over to voice cloning. Now let's run the code again to generate a new speech um, for female 1 speaker. We are actually generating the same text, so let's wait for it hello world my name is jarvis i am a creation of tony stark could you please tell me where to find him at and that's what female one speaker actually sounds like now um before we actually move over to voice cloning um uh, before i actually forget let's um try out the ggf quantized version so um to use the ggf quantized version you need to change the model config we'll change this to this um, ggf model config version one and we will point directly to the ggf file we want so let's copy this so it actually points to the dot ggf file directly now um we are going to change this to to this ggf i don't think there's anything else now let's run the code again but okay let's um change this to female 2 Hello world, my name is Jarvis. I am a creation of Tony Stark. Could you please tell me where to find him at? Okay, now another thing we're going to be trying out is the Q80. And let's point it to that one. Now let's run the code again. And we'll be generating audio for the same speaker, female 2. So here I would actually sound.
Hello world, my name is Jarvis, I am a creation of Tony Stark. Could you please tell me where to find him at? So as you can hear, it actually sounds much better, but we are going to check it out when we are actually doing the voice cloning also. Now let's switch this back to the Hugging Face model config. Now let's clone a voice. We'll comment this out. And we're going to comment this out because we won't be using the default speakers anymore. So we're going to generate the speaker.json file so we can actually comment this out on our second run. So let's do that. As you can see, the speaker will then load that speaker.json. So this is what we're going to generate and it's for Cogman. Now let's go over to our project direct three and find out so you can hear what this audio file actually sounds like before we actually clone it. Now this is Cogman S the wave. No, he's going to die. I was making the moment more epic. Leprechauns are tiny, green, and Irish, and that is offensive. So let's clone it, and it's going to generate a speaker the JSON like I said earlier, and this is what it's going to be generating for the speech. Hello world, my name is Jarvis. Or let's change this to Cogman. So let's run this code. So we're going to see this JSON file appear in our project direct three. Hello world, my name is Kaufman. I am a creation of Cybertron. Could you please tell me where to find it? So as you can actually hear, it actually sounds close. And even though this model is just a 500 million parameter model, it did a fair job, let's say a fair job, um, let's say around 40% accuracy. Now, as you can see over here, it actually says 10 to 15 second audio clip. That's what it's actually recommended for the speaker profile. So something else we're going to do is we're going to comment this out. So I will show you what I'm actually talking about. Just to save time, we are going to only load the speaker from the .json. That's what we're going to do. We ain't going to be saving a speaker anymore. We'll only be loading the speaker from the .json, which we generated earlier. So it should actually save time. Now we can actually change the text here to whatever we want. So let's run the code again. Hello, Austin. My name is Cogman. How are you doing today? And as you can see, it actually did the same voice cloning, the same quality, but it actually used the .json file. Now, if we open the .json file, you can see what it looks like. But before we actually check out the Jarvis file, we're going to do a comparison with the GGUF quantized version. And what we're going to be going for is the Q8. And we're going to be changing this to GGUF config. And we'll also change this to face GGUF and we'll point this to this. So let's generate this again. Okay, now let's run the code. And just a quick note, the transcript here is the transcription of this particular audio file, just like in every other voice cloning model. Hello, Austin. My name is Kopman. How are you doing today? As you can hear, that's what it actually sounds like. It sounds quite different. And just a quick note, the transcript is a transcription of this particular audio file you're cloning. And it's basically the same thing with every when you're actually dealing with every other voice cloning model. As you can actually hear, it actually sounds okay. It sounds quite different from um, the normal model. But we'll take it since this is a 500 million parameter model. And let's switch this to Jarvis. And something that's going to change is the transcript. Since this is Jarvis a wave, we're going to be changing the transcript to the transcription of Jarvis a wave. Okay, we've pasted that in, as you can see here. Now let's go over to Jarvis a wave in our finder and let's play it so you will actually hear what it actually sounds like. And it's not a high quality audio, including the Cogman's um, audio, it's not actually a high quality audio. Both of them are not high quality um, audio. I actually recorded them from a YouTube video. So. Um, let's go over to Finder and play it so you can actually hear it. So you can actually draw a comparison once we're actually done cloning it. So this is the Jarvis file. Accessing alarm and interface settings. In this window, you can set up your customized greeting and alarm preferences. The world needs your expertise, or at least your presence. Launching a series of displays to help guide you. As you can hear, it actually sounds very low quality. So let's go back to our IDE. Now let's run the code. Sorry, let's change this to Jarvis. Let's run it again. 
and we are still using the GGUF quantized version. And once we actually done trying out the GGUF quantized version here, we're going to switch back to the hugging face model. Uh, as you can actually see, it didn't actually play anything, and I do not know why it did that. And but let's actually try it again. Hello, Austin. My name is Jarvis. How are you doing today? As you can actually hear, it actually sounds way much better than when we cloned Kogman's voice, uh, it actually sounds way much better. And let's switch back to the Hugging Face model. Let's run it again. For some reason, it didn't actually generate anything, so let's run it again. So just like before, it actually ran into this problem where it just generated nothing. So let's hope it actually works this time. And I think it's actually a bug with this particular model because this is the second time this is happening while we are actually testing this but i've actually experienced this problem when i tried it out so it's definitely a bug and again it didn't generate any audio so what i'm gonna do is switch this audio this is a shorter audio i think this is just six seconds and it actually ends here in preferences so we're going to take a check out this text now let's run this code and see if it actually works and since it's a shorter audio we are cloning it won't actually sound close enough to the original speaker and as you can see it didn't actually generate anything again let's run it hello austin my name is jarvis how are you doing today so finally it actually generated an audio <laughs> So um, this model is um, not consistent. And so for my final thoughts, I do think this is a great model for text to speech generation. And as for the voice cloning process, it's actually a step in the right direction. If you've actually played around with fish speech by fish audio and also um, Cosy voice and F5 TTS, you would actually notice that the process for voice cloning is actually really laborious, especially for fish speech, which actually goes through three different processes, and you have to go through those processes every single time, which means you need to generate the profile, you still need to actually load the speaker and do all that. You like for fish speech, it actually goes through this three process consistently one it actually generates the prompt from the voice the next one is generating the semantic tokens from the text and the last one is generating vocals from semantic tokens and it's resource intensive which means it does the same exact thing every single time even if you're cloning the same exact speaker so but for this one it actually saves that particular speaker profile and you can just load it up easy which means it won't take the same time as the first time you're cloning that particular speaker's voice which is really cool, is what everybody have been asking for. So to me, it's actually a very, very, very good development um, and I actually love it, but I won't actually be using this for now until maybe a, a new version is actually out. I think with a new version, they would actually do better. But for now, you can actually use it for the text-to-speech and since that is more reliable than the voice cloning, I think it's actually really good and it's way more fluent than many other text-to-speech models so you can actually check it out and you can play around with it and another thing to actually look out for uh, this configuration you can play around with them you can increase the max length and do all that and if you have better uh, pc than i do which means you can actually integrate this into your ai system and to do that you can just put all this in a function and pass in whatever text you want so that's going to be it for this video make sure you do like share and subscribe it actually really helps a lot especially as we're on our way to our first 1000 subscribers that's our major milestone right now and uh, make sure you hit the bell icon if you want to be notified whenever we actually release a new video on this channel so thank you for watching have a nice one